Hi, my love. <laughs> um, so this is going to be, your reading is going to be actually a two-part, um, a two-part section. So, so for those of you guys who are tuning in, this is the spiritual healing reading or the spiritual health. Um, <laughs> and basically this is a blend of both an aura and a chakra reading. So the aura reading is usually it's separate. Chakra reading is separate, but I created a spiritual health, um, service where I blend the two and this whole reading is just all about that. So hopefully the angle of this is not too weird. <laughs> I'm sitting in the car because um, there's no privacy in the house and I wanted to be able to focus on you. So um, what I did was I actually took, I took notes. So the way that I do my, um, the channeling session is I will um, meditate. <laughs> um, I meditate and I focus on your energy. I focus on you. I focus on your name. Um, I focus on all of, you know, all of that good stuff. And then um, I write down or I'm like in this case, I took the notes on my phone. But because I film from my phone, I had to transcribe the notes onto paper. So as you can see, this beautiful paper is filled with my notes all about your beautiful energy. <laughs> so um, the first half, the first part of this video was going to be all about your um, energy. And the second half of the video is going to be the actual reading where I will pull the cards. Um, so this is mostly the aura and energy um, portion of your reading, whereas the cards will be focusing on the chakras and just giving you some additional insight. I am so sorry for the lighting to be like <laughs> changing so crazily, ah! but I'm here parked at the park. It's a beautiful view, but... Um, yeah. Okay. So let's start first. So what I did was, um, I did a body scan on you and a body scan is I meditate and I know it sounds so weird, but I meditate and I focus and I pretend like you're there with me. Um, and I basically look at you <laughs> and I focus on you and I focus on the energy flow through my body as it connects with you. I know it sounds really weird, but um, when you actually start doing this kind of stuff, it, it's legit. Um, and then I start to feel sensations in my body that perhaps you are feeling. Okay. <laughs> so for the body scan, what I wrote is, um, the upper left shoulder and the lower back is what was first. I was feeling like a buzz in. Okay. So the upper left, the upper left shoulder, I was feeling more of a tension or a stress. And I, I wrote down that you carry a lot of your, I'm going to take off my glasses. So there's no glare. Sorry, love. Um, so I wrote that you carry um, a lot of your issues onto your shoulders, mostly on the left-hand side. For some reason, um, the majority of it, it's like it's almost like you're unbalanced. And the majority of your stress and the tension that I was feeling is in the left-hand portion of your body. Um, so you carry a lot of your weight on this side. I don't know if you're right-handed, maybe if you're actually left-handed, that would make sense more because then it's like a lot of your energy, your work, the flow with your hand goes through your left side. But if you're not left-handed, um, and you are more so right-handed, then perhaps for some reason you will put all of the other crap that your right hand isn't working on. You, it's like you focus it on your left-hand side. Um, then I put the lower back pain. Now, first thought that came to mind for the lower back pain, and it was more so on the right hand side. Okay. So the right lower back, um, I was feeling the menstrual cycle. So I do feel like some of the symptoms that you get for a menstrual cycle is lower back pain, but it's also past injuries. Now this could either be you injured yourself in the, in this re recent past life, this past life, this, I mean, no. <laughs> this present life you injured you injured yourself or it could be a memory your body has like this memory of a past life injury in your lower back okay so that actually makes sense for if you are experiencing 
lower back pain but you have no idea where that would come from because it's, you didn't injure yourself or it was a random like a sharp pain that you feel but it doesn't make sense um that could actually actually be like your body your energy remembering a past life trauma so um perhaps it comes from that um, and then I also put slouching because it was funny because I was seeing you sitting down and I feel like you jiggle your leg a lot, but you slouch. <laughs> so I wrote that as well. Um, I don't know, maybe growing up you were told, you know, sit up straight. Maybe that was something that you were constantly being told, sit up straight. Um, but I get the feeling you're very jittery. So I was getting the sensation of like jittery leg, you're always moving, that kind of thing. Um, I have the same that's the same thing too. Um, I tend to always be playing with my hair and whatnot, but um, for you, I feel more jittery and also <laughs> people, especially growing up, paid a lot of attention to the way that you sat. So your posture was always an issue. So that could also be, you know, maybe reasons why I was tapping into the lower back. So um, next week I did, um, I feel headaches. So I was feeling the sensation of a headache and then I, it, but it was a weird one. It was more of a pulsate. Okay. So when I say pulsate, it was like feeling like, like, woo, woo, woo. and it was at the top of the head. So instantly I put, it's a result of a weak crown chakra. So when we do your chakra portion, the reading, your chakra reading, I will tap into your crown chakra even more. And I will literally pull, what I do is I pull tarot cards and oracle cards for each of the chakras. So it's like the cards are kind of um, giving you the card reading aspect of your chakra energy. Um, but I do feel like you have a very weak crown chakra. And if you don't know what a crown chakra is, the crown chakra actually rests at the very top of your head. And it is your connection to spirit. It is like your telephone line to spirit, to God, to the universe, to your higher self, to your angels. I mean, it's all of that. So um, it's where your faith comes in. It is where your belief systems, religion, all of that kind of stuff comes from the crown chakra. Um, and for yours, I feel it was weak and it needs spiritual connection. That's what I wrote. Needs spiritual connection. So for me, when I wrote that, I was taking it in terms of um, maybe recently or for a while now, you have been feeling a disconnect spiritually. It could be maybe you are questioning your faith in God. It could be you're questioning what kind of a, what kind of a faith you have in general. Maybe you question your... Um, your religious beliefs, um, or maybe you don't have any religious beliefs whatsoever, but now you're starting to feel like you want some sort of connection, like you want some sort of bond with some sort of spiritual higher being, but you're not attracted to, um, you know, religion. Um, so spirituality in general. Whatever that is, there is some shift going on with you, and I do feel like this is something that will further develop strongly, but I feel like right now the sensations of the headache is kind of like spirit is trying to get your attention, and oftentimes when we are downloading, that's like usually the term that we get, is when we're, when we're downloading a message, when we are receiving a message from spirit or our, our guides or God or whoever you want to associate this message with, um, when we are receiving those messages, sometimes it is so overwhelming, especially if we are not used to it, that we feel the sensation of a headache. Um, I also put, um, a, it is a sign of stress, stress te and tension. Like I said, you carry a lot of your stress and tension on your left hand side, but it can also be connected also to your head. Um, and also the spiritual side effects due to lack of connection and faith. Um, I also put that you often will doubt the universe, even though you say you trust it. So I feel like for you, you know, the universe has your side, you know, that the universe is giving you what you deserve, what you need, what you want at the times that you need it, want it and deserve it. Um, but at the same time, it, you will doubt what the universe is giving to you. So I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> it's like you trust the universe, but then you're doubting the universe. So I feel like it's like the universe could be handing you exactly what you're being asked, like what you were asking for. But then even though you have it in your hands, it's like you still doubt, is this worth it for me? Or is this meant for me? Or is this a message? So I do feel like you are very spiritually connected. Um, and I'll get that 
I'll get into that right now, like in a little bit. Um, but I also feel like there's a lot of doubt that plays a role in all of this. So that's kind of big for you because if you can eliminate doubt, um, your spiritual connection will skyrocket. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I also put, um, even though you trust it. So for, let's talk about your aura now. So the aura, and if you don't know an aura, the aura is like an energy field that is, all around your body it's literally all around us um but it could be a couple inches above it's it's usually like when you think about it it's a couple inches above your skin um and then it expands outward and people who have radiant um very vocal very like crazy energy their auras can expand tons and tons of like distance away from them um and it's bright but other people who are a little bit more um like quiet or shy or have um, esteem, self-esteem issues or whatever, you know, they're just a little bit more drawn inward, um, your auras tend to be smaller and closer together. So for you, I was seeing it somewhat in the middle. I feel like you have highs and lows, okay? Um, and so I feel like you have moods, like you, ha you have very um, strong mood changes where your aura will also represent those mood changes. So I feel like sometimes you're going to have um, <laughs> a high mood where your aura is like expanding and people will notice you. A lot of times when you get noticed by strangers or, you know, if you're single and someone notices you in that way, it's because your aura is exhibiting that, okay? And they're t attracted to it. <laughs> um, and then a lot of times when your aura is tight and it's closed in and you're not feeling social, you're feeling more antisocial, you're feeling quiet, you just don't want to talk, people will um, feel it. And, you know, oftentimes people will either leave you alone or you, you you know, those who are intuitive or those who are psychic will tap into that and, you know, those friends will be more concerned about you. So what I put is your aura is mainly orange, pinks, and yellow. So it's a, it was beautiful. Um, when I was seeing it, it, it reminded me of a certain type of flavor of ice cream. And oftentimes I think it's like the the sherbet the rainbow sherbet and i don't know why they call it rainbow sherbet sherbet even though it's only pink orange and yellow <laughs> but that's the kind of ice cream like I, that's the kind of ice cream now i'm gonna want ice cream that's the kind of aura like that's what it reminded me of so it looked like the sherbet and you know like how ice cream or any kind of ice cream that has multiple colors it's kind of blended in it's like swirly that's what your aura looked like and it was absolutely gorgeous um and what I was seeing was the orange and the yellows, more of the orange and yellows, um, were from your hands down. So when I envision you, I see you standing in just like a basic human form. Um, so as if your hands were down to your sides. So if you're imagining yourself that way, your hands are down to your sides, imagine from your hands down, I was seeing orange and yellows. Now the oranges was mainly on your left side. Um, yeah, left side was more mostly orange. So what I did was I brought my um, my little aura card. This is actually, this was given to me when I went and had my aura done. And you can also get your aura phot photographed at your local metaphysical shop or if there's like a healing festival or something like that. Sometimes um, they will have the aura camera where they can take a picture of you and your aura comes out. I should have brought mine so you could see it, but... Um, I didn't I don't I'm so afraid of like ruining it <laughs> but they gave me a little card that talks about the colors and so I wanted to to read off the ones I was seeing for you so for the orange I was it's creative independent adventurous a risk taker resourceful strategic loves to test physical limits mentally focused overcomes challenges so that's a very powerful aura for you to have um, and I feel like it's your potential okay and I feel like it is there it is always there for you and and this is also another note your auras change um, based on your moods, obviously. They change on your moods. They also change on the kind of life events that you are going through. They change um, for a lot of different things. So just because right now it's orange, red, orange, pink, and yellow doesn't mean that it is always orange, pink, and yellow. Um, it, it'll change. It can be completely different from one day to the next. So this is just in this, like, in this brief moment right now as I was tapping in. Um, and then I put it on the left-hand side. So on the card, it says, 
Your left side is your imaginative, your emotional, and your receptive side, okay? It represents the energy that is moving in toward you um, and how you view your energy and the future. So what is coming toward you? What is in the future coming toward you? To have orange in that aura is telling you that there is confidence. There is a surge of confidence. There is a surge of really good things happening that are coming your way. So if you have been feeling like you are just getting hit left and right, this retrograde has been rough, I'll tell you that. Um, just know that with the orange coming in from your left, it's just showing that you have a surge of confidence. So if there is anything major coming up that you need to make a big decision about or a big action to take, um, this orange energy is going to be very helpful for you and you should be tapping into that. Um, you should be trusting in yourself and having that self-confidence. Okay. Um, I also saw yellows um, and I saw magenta. Well, this one is magenta, but it's, you know, I was seeing is pink. So the magenta, oh no, let's talk about the yellow first. Yeah. The yellow was more in your hands. And I wrote that um, in your fingertips, mainly like a really bright highlighter yellow. So yellow is energetic, optimistic, confident, childlike, fun-loving, sensitive, happy, free spirit, creative, generous, and you connect with nature and animals. And I really like that the animal thing came up because one of your animal guides came through also. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Um, but I love, it just shows that you have a fun, loving, energetic nature to you. And the fact that it says all of that, I, and I, I promise I wasn't even looking at this <laughs> when I wrote your notes, but what I wrote here was, um, um, fingertips vibrate in a bright, in a bright light, like a highlighter yellow, the touch of sunshine. It brings joy with touch. So that's what I wrote and I didn't even look at this card. So that's super, I like it when that happens because it just shows me that I'm on point. Um, and I put youthful and cold hands. So very youthful energy. When you touch other people, they feel that energy from you. You have a very childlike energy to you. You have a very um, natural, like loving energy to you. Um, people really enjoy you being around them. People really enjoy um, oops, I don't want this to fall. My screen got all like dim, but I'm wondering if that's because of the sun. <laughs> the sun keeps coming in and out because it's like cloudy and then it's not cloudy. So anyways, um, I'm seeing like that you have the touch of happiness, like kind of like the, the golden touch Midas, King Midas, the golden touch. Um, so very healing potential there. If you ever do like Reiki or energy work, you bring happiness to other people. And then um, what else I was seeing is um, cold hands. I was feeling the sensation of cold hands. Like my hands literally felt like ice cubes after that. So I feel like um, people often tell you, oh my gosh, your hands are so cold. Or, oh my gosh, you know, you know, maybe you've been told that as growing up, you've always had cold hands. <laughs> so that's just a physical sensation I felt. Okay, so then the pink, the pink moves in swirls. So I was seeing it actually moving, like moving in swirls. At the top of your head, there are dark spots. So the pink aura is all surrounding like the top portion of your body and the swirls, like it, it was moving in swirls. And then at the very top here, I was seeing dark spots like holes. And um, dark spots or holes are actually like, um, you can think of it as damage to the aura due to negative energies or negative people or experiences that have not been healed. So the fact that that was coming up at the top where your crown chakra is, where I was feeling like you need that, that spiritual connection, this could either stem from a trauma that took place that caused you to have a weakened spiritual connection um, or to be kind of like um, not attracted to your spiritual connection or um, this is like negative people that are in your life or that have been in your life and you haven't healed from those. So they leave holes and these holes, you know, when they're really small, it's not that big a deal. You know, you'll, you'll feel it every once in a while, but this one I saw was a little bit bigger for you. And I was feeling like, you know, these are, this is like a portal. You think of these holes like portals where negative energy can come through and it can literally mess with you. So it can cause imbalances in your body. It can cause imbalances, especially if 
because it's the crown chakra it's in your head your mind so negative thinking depressed thoughts suicidal thoughts like all that kind of stuff um i feel like that's you know that that's what comes from these holes <laughs> how do you cleanse it and how do you heal it like by a damn good cleanse for one and two it's just working on that area so if you know your crown chakra is weak you are going to want to focus on strengthening the crown chakra you're going to want to focus on um figuring out what is it about my faith that i am so unattracted to and finding something that inspires you faith wise and spiritually wise um will do amazing so that's spiritual work for you um and then onto the back <laughs> where are we at oh we're at 20 minutes okay we better hurry up um i don't want this to be super long for you <sighs> so then i put the roots grow at your feet more so you have roots growing from your feet i was seeing roots um growing into the ground but they were tangled which tells me that you need to focus on grounding but re um <sighs> You need to focus on grounding and realigning yourself. Where are you at in your home life? I think something needs to shift in your home life, even as simple as like moving the furniture. Something like that will help you feel better, like having some sort of a reset. Um, I also put add nutrients to your soul, so um, or your soil, <laughs> which is um, in parentheses, I put healthy choices. So this is healthy choices in eating or the way that you speak, speaking positively, um, or things that you read or the stuff you watch on TV, whatever, like surrounding yourself with positive things and also people in your life. I put remove negative people. Um, I put the bottoms of your feet are sometimes a deep pink in hue. So, you know, the, the skin, your skin color, the bottoms of your feet sometimes have a deep, a deep pink or they feel hot. Um, and I put that is the root chakra on overdrive. So root chakra is technically at your spine, like the base of your spine or your butt. But I also see the root chakra in the feet. Um, and I actually have this issue too. My feet run very hot, and it's and I've been told when I was um, having a Reiki session that my feet are so hot all the time because I'm always grounding and I don't focus on other areas. So I wrote the same thing for you because I feel it's the same kind of advice. Um, to focus on grounding, but you also need to focus on your other energy areas, especially the crown. <laughs> um, I put, I also see lenses like goggles around your eyes. Um, and spiritually, I felt this was a protective mechanism. So I feel like you spiritually, you have goggles over your eyes to protect your eyes because you actually have the ability to see beyond the physical. So I wrote that you are a natural medium and that you may further develop if you just remove the goggles. So if this is something that interests you, mediumship and whatnot, or you wanna to learn to, to kind of realign with that spiritually, especially when you're focusing on the crown chakra, removing the goggles will simply, will simply like remove the veil and you'll be able to see things. Um, and I don't mean see things like physically from the eye, this is all third eye stuff, like the same with me. Um, then I put overall energetic, your root and your crown chakra need work, but everything else looks good as far as from this perspective. Um, I've put, you are most refreshed at dusk and nighttime. So when the sun is setting, that's when you start to feel more alive. Your body is re-energized. Um, the sunlight, you are sensitive. So you're sensitive to sunlight, you're sensitive to the bright lights, the fluorescent lights, all of that kind of stuff. You'd rather be in dim lighting I put moonlight in, is a time for you to recharge. So if you need to charge or recharge, um, I would recommend moonlight versus the sun. Um, and then I put it, but it, it is important to recharge. And then I also put your strongest ideas come at night. You are very inspired at night. So I wrote down journal. So keeping a journal, writing down these ideas, these inspirational things that come to you is very important. And last but not least, I wrote spirit is at your right hand side. So your guides, your spirit is on the right. They come to you from the right hand side. And I was seeing crow ring, crow wings. So a crow, <laughs> but the wings of a crow at your back, like almost like angel wings. And then I wrote animal guide. So I feel like your current animal guide right now is coming in the form of a crow or a black bird. Um, and I put there's hidden interest in death in the underworld. So this is stuff that either you know is there, but you don't really talk about it stuff maybe that you had as a child 
um, or just hidden interests that you've been recently tapping into. But it's about the death or underworld or the, the Grim Reaper, like that kind of stuff. Um, I put that you are with spirit, you are to lead them to the light by you. So <laughs> that totally didn't even sound right. <laughs> I mean, what I mean is if you do mediumship work, you're going to get a lot of spirits that are in between. Okay. That, that they haven't crossed over where you will actually guide them to it. And that's actually something that I do every once in a while when I do tap in, um, I tend to get a lot of the, <laughs> what do they call them? Like the, um, there's a term for them, low vibrational spirits, or I don't know, there's another term, but um, I tend to get those more so than like family members. <laughs> so sometimes we as mediums will act as like that middle ground, we pass them onto the light. So if you were ever to work with your mediumship, that will also be something you will have to do or will be faced with doing. And then at the end, I put don't fear. So I do feel like a lot of your spiritual connection um, or the lack of your spiritual connection with the crown chakra being weak has to do with fear. And perhaps it's because you do know you have mediumship abilities or, you know, as a childhood, maybe you had some trauma. <laughs> um, but either way, this is your... Um, your aura, your channeled reading version. That the this is the first half. Um, I'm gonna get to the card reading most likely either if not tonight, then um, tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. Um, but I I'm doing this in two parts because the spiritual um, the spiritual healing, the spiritual health reading, whatever it's called. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> Um, it is a huge reading, so I have to do it in two parts. Otherwise, this would be like an hour-long video. So this concludes your aura channeled version of the reading. The next portion, part two, will be your chakra reading, which is a card reading. Um, so we'll tap into all of your chakras, and then I'll just pull cards to see where you're at and some advice and all that kind of good stuff. Um, to give you that intuitive insight and anyone who's watching if you guys are still watching um this reading is available this reading is available it is in my shop it's a little hefty price it's it's 120 dollars, but it's because it is a two-part it's like you're meshing two pieces in one um it's a gigantic reading it would pretty much be a good 60 minute reading if I were to film this all together um, and it's also my time of channeling it's my time of meditation and it's just my time of focusing on you so if you are very interested in this and I will say spiritual health readings are not me diagnosing I am not a doctor um, spiritual health is me tapping into your energy your chakras and just what I feel from you so um, if you are interested they are in my shop it's available um, it's $120 and like I said, it'll most likely be a two-part video like this um, Or if you are interested in just an aura reading that is available or if you want a chakra reading that is also available too separately So um, I will see you soon <laughs> I'll see you guys soon and to my client um, You will get the second part of your reading very shortly either like I said tomorrow or um, Or maybe I'll just wait and email this to you when I have both of them filmed We'll see. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye loves.